for that. Um, welcome to Wednesday Night Live. We're going to do some more course dissection tonight. So I was just talking about course maps, love them or leave them. I was just talking about, before I hit the record button, that um, there's no reason to not use the course map that's good enough. They're all valid. I've heard them all. I know that they can be problematic. And um, there's things, it's, sometimes it's difficult to do the, the visual. Um, sometimes it's difficult to make the decisions and then have to change them once you get out there. But it, the value still outweighs and I've heard a lot of good valid reasons why the course map isn't um, friends with some competitors. So I have three phases of my walkthrough that make it make me more motivated to be friends with my course map. And I want to know how much of my walkthrough can I enhance by using the course map effectively and can the course map hinder my walkthrough. So th that's what I was just talking about a, a minute ago. If I get too attached to the course map, I can get frustrated in my walkthrough because of it. So I don't want to let that happen. So I don't. And then, um, and how much of my walkthrough can I enhance? A lot. So whatever's in the way of your loving your course maps, find a way around it. Talk to me, talk to other, ask your fellow competitors, hey, do you, how, how do you feel about the course map? And you'll hear all kinds of stuff because boy, the opinions are strong about it. It's interesting. So um, phase one, I call geometry. And I strongly encourage you to learn the path and the flow of the course as a course, as if there were no dog or human involved, if it was just about lead and a pencil, if it was just about ink and a pen, if it was just about straight geometry. So for me in the beginning, it's not at all about anything to do with the dog I have, the size of the dog, the training, my abilities, none of that. And I, I, I joke that there's basic geometry and that's quote unquote, just <laughs> the line from obstacle to obstacle. It just the path of the dog from one thing to the next thing. And you can affect that line via handling. And then the, the advanced geometry is what I'm calling when there's a decision to wrap a stanchion, either via the backside, which would be refusal line to bar, on the left wing or the right wing, or bar to stanchion via the le left way or the right way. Um, so those are the places where current course design, the judges are really getting clever, you guys, at making some lines that are way, way, way better for the dog if you go the hard, hard, hard way for you. <laughs> and it, it we've got to... The game, <laughs> the game of agility is, can I make my dog go left or right, tight or not from either side of my body whenever I want? That's all, that's all we gotta do. So you wanna be able to have the skills to tell the dog to go left, right from your left or your right or middle. Um, and, um, and once you have that, then, then it's not so hard to get trapped into bad lines just for the sake of con your convenience or effort. Decisions, decisions. So th this is all that I'm trying to figure out on the course map. Is it to my advantage to have the obstacle on my left or my right? Is it to my advantage to have my dog and the obstacle on my left or my right? Um, what skills do I have? You only have X number of turn cues. You only have X number of side change turn cues. You only have X number of turn cues without side changes. You only have X number of ways to tell the dog to go tight. There's just not, I mean, you have what you have is the point. <laughs> you gotta know what you have and you gotta know how much you can rely on which ones and what circumstances. And I encourage you to look at your decisions, your walking, your course map, your geometry, I encourage you to look at all of that stuff as um, facts. So the next time someone asks you, why are you going left on the yellow wingless jump before the tunnel? You don't answer with, 
I don't know, it just sort of feels like maybe. So when, you know, and you want to be able to say, based on, blah, 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 uh, you know, I, I will have the dog on my left when I'm doing the weed pulls, I'll have a side change after the teeter, and I want to be here when the board hits the ground and all the other little um, tips so that you can answer with facts and not feelings about your, your handling decisions. Phase three, this is the whole reason why I want to um, uh, have that as much work, as many decisions and as much is things thought out on that course map is because I really want five full minutes for my dress rehearsal. I really want five minutes of my walkthrough to be from one to two. How often do I get that? Not as often as I would like because I get stuck in decision land, but I try to go to the places. I know on my course map, there's two or three places that I don't know what I'm going to do from the course map, because I don't marry the course map, I date it. I'm only dating course map. So I will go to those places and I really want to make my decisions in three minutes. Um, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. If it doesn't, I start chipping into my five minutes for my dress rehearsal where I want to just walk one through 20 or 21 over and over and over till it's smooth as silk. If I don't get to do that, all it means is my chances for having the run that I want are going to go down a little bit. If I only get to walk that course one time from top to finish, if I run it nicely, it, I had a little bit of luck on my side that day. I think that somebody's not muted. So I'm going to have everybody take a second right now and look at your screens and make sure that you've got your red um, mic with a red line through it. Thanks. So thank you very, very much for coming. I've got my email up there at Sandy at Ace Dog Sports. That's how you can email me. <laughs> Let me know what you like, what you didn't like. Um, the website is there so that you can sign up for the newsletter. And that's how folks are always like, I didn't know you had a new program out, which I do. I have a new program that started today called BAM. It's a pre-agility. It's amazing. I love it. Um, and there's a lot of information on my Facebook page. So there's YouTube where you can watch all these things that weren't always just course dissection. There's some good lectures out there. So um, there's lots of, I'm trying to create a nice body of free information to give back to my community. So without further ado, um, we're gonna do this course. And I'm going to try to do it. I want to leave the other the other course that I have printed out was really tricky, and I um, showed posted on Facebook this run that was a premier standard. And I noticed when we first started doing these, I promised everybody that I would do a novice course and a um, advanced course every week. And I didn't do novice last week and I didn't do novice this week. So you guys can speak up if that's a problem. So this was the course, Tuxie's really pretty run, so proud of him that um, I didn't have tonight when I got here. <laughs> thought I had it. I have the video. I'm going to show you the video again. But Julie sent me hers and she has um, had marked hers up. She didn't have her clean one, but that's okay. Um, because um, it'll keep me from, I mean, I'll be able to show you what I want to show you. So there is advanced geometry at number two. And what that means is we have to take the back side, so it's refusal line to bar. So we have to go either that way or the way the red line goes. So you guys, this is why when I say, how are you gonna decide which way to go on two, you have to look at four because you can get to three nice and, nice and uh, fairly easy um, either way, you can also get, 
you can line the dog up very nicely from one to this backside. And you can also set your dog up for one very nicely. And you guys, I put a lot of work into my dog's laser beams coming out of his paws. And for those of you that don't have a lot of experience with agility, a dynamite lineup, meaning you can move your feet and have your dog line up, saves a lot of anxiety at the start line. Because if they're over just a little bit, it can cause, like in this case, if you set the dog up like that, maybe you couldn't get him to sit and you're messing around and you're begging him to sit and he doesn't have a great lineup and he doesn't sit real quick. You, you could have to put in a real hard turn to get there. So as promised, I have multiple maps. So when I get one super. So Julie decided to go this way and I didn't. I wanted Tux to take that line. And and that line that I decided to take was actually not taking the triple, the best lined up for the double. And that's really unusual for me. Usually I'm going to always take the obstacle before in the way that the dog is lined up for four. So I always say you must make your decision one obstacle in advance. And I say must, but I don't say never or always very often in this sport. Sorry, guys. Because this was so easy to accomplish and this space was so big and this space gave total enough space for correction, I did not want to do the, the complete, almost complete circle donut. And uh, Tux handled it really well. So. The thing about being the fun part, you guys, is to be open-minded. I will always take four into consideration about two. And I will almost always make my decision on the better line. But I take everything into consideration. And all I want my students to do is to be able to, when they're not going to take, like I could just tell you, Bringing the dog around this way set the dog better up for four. But it wasn't enough better for me to, to, to crank him around that hard because he was still, they're still taking his jump at a bit of an angle. This is how the dog would actually take this. The dog wouldn't actually do what the red line shows. So the difference was was marginal. Okay. Where were, you, where were you positioned on the start yourself? Oh, I was over. This was that's a good one. <laughs> good, good question. I let out to here and did a front cross. So I have a come to fist cue. So my goals are to have the path that I want the dog to go to be open if I can. And then I held my arm up with a closed fist and I released him on come here and did a front cross. And he knows that positional cue well enough. You'll see in the video that he just took it. Some people let out to here and pushed the dog to the backside and, and then rear crossed this and still got did a shallow rear cross. Lots of people, way more than that move, let out to here shoved the dog to the backside and did a front cross or a blind here. And that also worked. I felt because it's to nothing here that I didn't want to do that front cross across the front of his body while he was turning that tight. Do I do those? Yes, I do. But if I've got another option, I can take it. and and putting, so I was a little bit further behind than some of those handlers that did the front cross. They were here when the dog landed and I wasn't. So, so you guys, when you, this is what I'm talking about, making decisions on facts. When I real, if I had, if there had been, if this had been a threadle up here, I would have had to have done the blind or the front on this side. 
but I knew driving him from behind was not going to be a problem. And this line went pretty well. I did my classic call, say his name here, but I knew I would have enough movement that he wouldn't think it was a dog walk. What configuration is this handling? Box. This is, this is one side, two sides, three sides of a box. So even though that dog walk is 20 feet away, a box definition isn't an off, it doesn't mean it's an off course potential. It means the dog is technically passing something. So I have criteria for all my configurations. I know how I wanna handle a box. I know how I wanna handle a threadle. I know how I wanna handle a pinwheel, a 270, a 180. And anytime I can go to that first choice handling, I'm gonna. Then this got, I got into some very elaborate conversations about handling this because this is now a true box. And the dog came out of six to seven. This, so they're taking seven like this. This was a tight turn. And this configuration here is your classic pinwheel but the dog was, this was an off course. So doing 270s, or if the pinwheel looks like, this or that, so, so practicing the dog, so I have guidelines for my handling in relationship to the refusal line. My handling program is strongly based on positional cues in regards to the refusal line. If I'm on it, if I'm on takeoff side or if I'm on landing side. So I'm always thinking that. And I saw lots of handlers this weekend that would cross the refusal line even though there was a hairpin turn so if, I've, if I want my dog to do this, I would never cross this refusal line. I would be on D cell on takeoff. And if I wanted my dog to take this, I would cross the refusal line unless I was far enough back on approach where I had movement. Movement on this side, on takeoff side of one on the refusal line will buy me this jump as well. So I wanna be able, when my dog takes I call this jump one, jump two, and jump three of a pinwheel. Jump one, jump two. The, mo the bar that comes down the most in competition is jump two of the pinwheel. And when you've got jump two in the pinwheel and they're coming off of a triple or it's long jump on the prairie, long jump on the corner. Um, but I want my dog to know when he approaches jump one, if it's really a pinwheel or if it's a 180 or a 270. So we work on that, you guys. That's that's configuration training. That's not handling. I handle it the way I train it. It's both. So anyways, this was a box and a pinwheel, which is a really cool, um, maybe we'll, we should do a workshop with that because it's really cool. So I knew that I didn't want to be in the middle of the box because when I'm cueing my dog to go to one side of a box or another, that's the side I wanna be on is that simple math for a doggy brain. So the only time I'm in the middle of a box is if the dog is coming straight across the box. So, and I also don't like T-boning bars. So I knew, and I knew if I moved at all this way, I was gonna buy that jump because that's my training program. That's the deal with the dog. If, when you're here, if I, that's the information zone back here for Tux, that's the information zone. If I'm traveling in this direction, I'm promising you, I'm not giving you a turn cue. So you don't have to be looking for one. But if I'm on D cell, I want you to pay attention to me. So this, so once I got him into six, my goal was to be here as fast as I could. And we'll see on the video, I should have watched it closer. Um, I was about here when he hit information zone for five, but I was able to stand, remember to keep my back nice and straight and talk to him the whole time here, 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 here. And I, it doesn't look in the video like he glanced at that jump, but you'll hear, you'll hear my, I'll call it verbal confirmation. 
which also means I yelled. And then this was beautiful. Looky here. Looky this. Looky, looky, looky. So all you had to do was get the dog to hear. And once you held on, you get him to there and you just green light him. Go on, go on, go on, go on. Because um, this judge had these a few times. A lot of handlers don't, you guys look at this. That's less than five feet. This right here, these boxes are 10 feet each. So, and this little board's only 12 inches wide. So you don't want your dog getting on that board like this. And when's he going to see this? When's this jump going to start saying here, kitty, 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 you know, when he's here. So you got a choice. You can have, you can rely on your dog's ears or your eyes or his eyes, but I wanted to be about here and be reaching out with my hand and watching him come out. Um, but I decided, so this is a classic 180. Yes. And the dog actually would take this jump like that. So when you're drawing your well, that's what I would want. That's the line I would want. I wouldn't want the dog to come up here. And Julie, you know, said, oh, don't use my map. I, I did, you know, my lines were just quickly drawn. So she did that on the iPad. And those of you that have seen me try to do this with that, you know that it's not that easy. So, you know, if you work with me that I say it is usually, we got to get through this, Sandy. Um, that it is usually better to be on one jump or the other of the pinwheel, or, um, of the 180. I normally do not handle any 180 from the middle. There is usually an advantage to be on cleanly on one jump or the other. You guys, nobody come to lessons next week and say, but you said I always have to be on one side or the other. You said you're never in the middle said, no, no, usually. So I walked it both ways. I walked at, um, I walked at being closer to this jump when Tux is on the dog walk. He's on the dog walk. And I could be at this jump a little bit easier, you know, somewhere in here, wherever, but on this jump. So here's the middle of the 180. I could work my 180 from this jump or from this jump. I'm rarely in the middle. And in this case, I wanted to do just what Julie did and go through the middle. I didn't want to take the dog around this way. It was too far and not as good of an angle and to put the off course potential into play. So I looked at it both ways. I looked at handling 13 from here and then being able to be tight on this jump. And then I could do, you know, do a blind or a, um, or, or a tight pull and then have my weed pulls on my left. It's an advantage to have the weed pulls on the left here. You're gonna have the weed pulls on the left. Nobody in their right mind's gonna do the weed pulls on their right. So, cause you, <laughs> I know, I, sh I know. <laughs> you guys are cute. <laughs> that was, that was appropriate. So, so, so then I decided to put it, uh, <laughs> I don't normally talk like that here. Um, so then I looked at it of what it would be like to handle 13, but I'm like, oh crap, I can get to 14 faster. And if I want to make sure I want to get my wires so I'm like how far can I be up here while he's in the tunnel still get his eye to make that and because I decided I wanted to be on this jump and do because I've got this lovely dig 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 at an angle trained people trained a lot and then I thought, well, I'm going to have to then skedaddle to do the blind. But I realized that the rear was no problem in this case. And with all of those techniques, a tight pull here, Let whenever I send him, he knows he's coming back to me. So I didn't have to work hard 
to get this. I didn't have to be running over there, banging the gavel, yelling, because when I'm still and sending, he always knows that's a boomerang. So I was able to be here and I released him to me. I'm, I didn't cue the jump. I cued my body, wrapped him, said, dig, 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 put him, I had him on my right and I did a nice soft recall on the poles or a rear cross, sorry, not a recall, rear cross. So in the video, it's pretty. So now I looked at a peel away on the poles and a front cross to get this backside. And I also looked at a peel away and I, I always travel. So if I want my dog to go down here by himself, I will move. And that's why the rear cross here was like, yes, because I didn't want to be ahead. I needed to be, I, this is my next destination. I didn't need to be racing here. Look at how close 14 is to 17. So then I realized, cool, being behind is an advantage. So I followed him and then I couldn't make up my mind here. I thought for sure on the course map, I would do the front cross here, but it felt like I was running around and running across here felt so much better. I have a stop day frame. Um, but I don't blind cross my contacts much. That is a training weakness. So that was so newsflash for me. I just don't do it that much. I don't have blind crosses on my radar as much, much as some. So this path for me was so much shorter than this one that I opted for it in the walkthrough. And I did the blind cross. And then all I had to do was set this line a little bit when he was in information zone here and parallel that path because they're actually taking that jump like that. And it was okay for him to carry out because this is where I need him to go. I don't need, and again, Julie's drawing on the, the red lines are drawing there. And then this was just, um, I made this as straight as possible. And I've gotten real good and we talk, you guys, about paralleling paths, how many people run at that last jump, T-bone the dog's line and cause the bar to come down. So I'm. this would be a place where I would want to, this is the dog's path, this is my path, I'm gonna parallel it. Questions? Uh, this one, if you wanna ask me a question. Unmute and say yes, or I'm going to show the video. Okay. We have to put Elmo to bed. I think. Let's see if we have to put Elmo to bed. I don't think it's that coarse. This is jumper, so it was the other course. I don't think it is. I think I've got the wrong course here. Premier Standard. Oh, sorry, guys. Give me just a second. I'm going to get it. Premier standard. Let's look and see if it is. I don't think it is. Oh boy. Anybody got Facebook? <laughs> Anybody want to grab a cup of tea? <laughs> I'll see if I can find it. 
There it is. You got it. I was so proud of myself for having my uh, courses labeled. Okay, can everybody see it okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can make it bigger, right? How's that? That's as big as I can go. Okay. Okay, just checking my... So I'm pulling him a little bit, but you can see that my that right fist is closed and then my left leg comes up, but he knows what I'm doing. He's not waiting for me. But you can see that that little bit of being, you guys, it was worth it to me to not get all gummed up here to do the side change on this side of the jump. Because you can see that I could just run, I was just free of that whole line to be completely out of his way. Where most, I, I, not a lot of people did that. Most people did the side change on the landing side. But now I'm just, he's just free to go. Okay, so now here's the box. So you can see the position I took and I'm not gonna move toward that blue jump. That's the next jump which a lot of people like to zigzag. They wanna go meet the dog at the jump and then go to the next one and then come back. But I had planned that lane to be in. So I step a little bit, actually, so that's, that's one. So that front cross there is not an ideal front cross because I really didn't need to keep moving any more towards that blue jump than right there. So my, so my right foot should be forward and my next, that left foot should, well, I didn't go too far past myself. That's pretty good actually. And then when I come up, I will be right at that yellow, but I'm not gonna travel. I'm planting myself right there. Cause if I had taken, once I did that front cross, that's why I would never have front crossed in the middle of that box. Because if I had, I would have had to move toward the yellow jump. This other, this panel jump, that's the trap jump where my cursor is. So I would want Tux with any motion on takeoff there to think that he shouldn't think twice about taking that logical obstacle in his path. So I'm using physical and verbals and I've got that left hand straight down and I'm, oh, well, and that's fine, that's fine, you guys. I'm telling him to stick on me in the information zone. Sorry, this is hard to do, to talk. And now I'm actually cueing the backside of the next jump. And when I watch this in slow-mo, it does not look to me at all like he's looking at that, at that uh, panel. But I do yell if I had you watch it in, in real time, which I, which I can. Sorry, I gotta get going here. I just, if you don't watch your videos in slow-mo, oh my gosh, they're so, it's so. So I released him on a close. I don't know if you could hear it. So I didn't, I wasn't in that position by the time he ended the dog walk and I didn't make him stay on the dog walk. So I, he, but I'm telling him to come to my leg because I, I don't want him to take that jump in extension. So I'm looking at him saying close, close, close. And, and then that's the send with the dig, dig, dig. And because I'm, because I made it a send, that's why I had to do the rear cross. I didn't want to be running towards that jump. And that's why I got such lovely comprehension there. And I'm working those weave poles the minute I have his head. And then that line is just set easily. Okay, questions? How did you get him to know to turn sharply after the tunnel to go to the dog walk? Did Name means look for me. Okay. 
because he wouldn't know because of the way I put him in there, because I was in full extension when he hit the tunnel. There's no physical cue available to me in that scenario. I like to do D cell as they're going in if I can. And that's why I train almost everything with verbal and physical counterparts. So did you tell him left or did you tell him? What did I you tell him? I only use verbals to, I only use my specific verbals to turn away from me. So I okay. was saying his name, which means look for me. Look, look for me so that, so that you cute. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he knows when he finds me, I'm going to have the line set. And if the, and if I don't have the line set when he needs it, you know, I mean, that's, that's my whole goal is that I would have that line set. Um, so he can, he can look for me and trust what he sees on a good day. <laughs> okay. Let's look at, let's look at, um, this jumpers course. Do I have Elmo on? Can you guys see the jumpers course? No. Yes. It's, yeah. Yeah. You see a map? Yes. I see a map. Oh, Golden, okay. Golden Gate, Pembroke, okay. Wells Creek. Oh, cool. All righty. So this was not premier. <laughs> this was regular. And I'll bet you that she didn't think it would run as hard as it did. So um, she did like box configurations. And you guys, when you when you get these course maps, you find the 180s, you find the boxes, you find the 270s, and there's and here you find the circles, and here's your training for the week, right? Because you can practice all of that. Here's a pinwheel this way, a pinwheel this way, a circle. Um, you can anytime there's a 180, you can work on threadles. Anytime there's a 270, you can work on threadles. Um, move the tunnel closer and work your 270-ish thing, 270s to back sides and out. So um, I like I like to I like to look for configurations like I would a word puzzle. Like there's the box, there's the 180, there's the pinwheel, there's the circle. Okay, so let's look at this. So you guys soon, one of these nights is gonna be all about the difference between lead out pushes and lead out pivots. A lead out push is basically using SERP positioning to get your lead out and lead out pivots are basically using correct front cross position for lead outs. The problem is is the level of detail that has to be taken into consideration in regards to analysis of planning, training, and execution with each individual person you're discussing <laughs> before you can know which is better. Um, I see lead out pushes work I don't like them for myself because they don't fit with what I would do mid course, um, except SERP. They, it, and, and the only time I'm gonna SERP is when I have to change sides of a lane across the landing side of a jump. That's what SERPs were made for. I don't have to do that on a lead out because I'm leading out, I'm still. So I don't choose, it's a, it's a choice. But a lead out push, if it's executed with the same timing, I digress. I'm sorry. Look, if you're interested, I'm going to do a whole night on just that. That's a teaser. That's your, that's your movie preview. But this particular course, we have to get to from three to four to five to six to seven to eight, to nine, to 10, to 11, to 12, to 13, to 14, to 15, to 16, to 17, 
to 18 to 19 to 20. So let me tell you what was hard about that. I was sweating this one. This was a no brainer for me. Some people did the lead out push in various different places. I did not lead out to my favorite place, which would be right on top of four because I wanted to show, I wanted to parallel this path and that path a little bit. I didn't, I certainly wasn't gonna lead out to the middle of the bar, but in the video, in retrospect, I think I would have chosen to be a little closer to four. I did not get the turn here I wanted. Tuxedo is a tunnel lover, but I, I don't care. He, when you look at it, I mean, we can, I'll slow it down and break it down for you. Only got 15 minutes. Gosh, darn it. How'd I do that again? Um, but I don't get the beautiful turn that I'm used to that I know I would have gotten if I was here, because if my positional cue is super clean, my timing can be off. If my positional cue is not outstanding, my timing cannot be off. And that's what I was talking about a second ago. But then what I did not want to do is travel um, is get stuck over here for this 1213. So this is kind of a no brainer, the polls. And I knew I didn't want to pass 11. So those of you that are training young dogs and you're running past them all the time, those dogs will learn that if you don't run past, they don't finish. So this is training that I can trust that I can stay at his shoulder and he won't have a problem. And I got this cue and this cue and this cue, and I was able to parallel. I didn't want to, you guys, so many people, because you had, this looks so tame on the map. <laughs> when I looked at this map, I was not nearly worried. But those of you that are here that ran it, this was, you had to really push the dog out here. And if you did it physically with your whole body, you could get them lined up perfectly for 12, but then getting this turn back, this is a lead change to this tunnel. And a lot of dogs were convinced by their handler's position and turn cues. So I decided that I wanted to parallel nine to 10 from over here. And then I gave them a pretty strong kick out because we shot, they shoot out of the tunnel and they had to have be shot out there. But then I could run with passage on 12. Thank goodness it wasn't winged. If it had been winged, I would have had to be over here more because I had to show him some pressure. And I yelled left. It should have been an out in my world. But you'll see Tux do this marvelous lead change. And then here was the other hard part is this again, the dog shot out and with this being a wingless, you want it to be in here to help. But then I swear this jump was over further <laughs> because if you did what you really wanted to do for 14, you'd have to navigate this just a little bit. And a lot of dogs went all kinds of crazy here. Um, and then folks, I love courses like this where folks did all kinds of different things. Um, I think a couple people served 19 out. Um, lots of people did lovely just decelled and rear cross 19. Um, I did the same thing I did up here is I was kind of here and I did a, 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 when he exited, I said strong, it's that one real strong so that I could run and show I didn't dip in here. If you got in here, you see what I mean? This is what happens all the time to folks. They get themselves in a little bit and now they're paralleling the wrong path. So I'm using that little bit of T-bone and I changed hands here. And I'll tell you what, this course, this whole thing about whether or not we need to change hands on SERP, we always did. And my being able to change hands when he was in information zone and, and do SERP handling, even from non-SERP position, he did a beautiful lead change here. Um, so this, there was a lot of strategy class, a lot of strategy. Um, and um, 
I was happy because uh, folks could see. I don't know when, sometimes people will say he read that well. And I don't know what if they're talking about they read my turn cue well, or they read my line or my lane well, or the dog read the course well all by himself. And I, so, you know, when you're talking to your competitors ringside, take those conversations another step, another step, another step, another step, because um, figuring out what's actually happening can be tricky. That's all. It's like, is it what? What is it? What it made the major influence? But I know the major influence for my dog on this course was handling these uh, tunnel turns and making it so I could get up to show him an illogical line. But lots of folks got, and I even looked at running on this. I wanted bad. This is one of those things that if I, you know, I want, you know, how you want to do it two ways. I wanted to call him over this jump run on this side and rear cross this. But this distance, and there was some, I had fun talking about this course when I was out there with, with my friends, um, you know, being on this side, the logical thing for my dog should be and would be, and I would be happy that it would be the poles. And then this distance was pretty far. It, again, I, <laughs> That's the thing about dating the course map and not marrying it. Any questions on it? I've got a clean one if you're afraid I'm going to get too messy. Any questions before we so look at you it? Did you rear cross in 18 to 19 and just run out? Yeah. Yeah, okay. you would have the dog on your right for 18. Tell him to rear cross. Yeah, I would do my turn cue. I'd have the line set here and that would be a go right and then I would be running my dog would be coming like this and I would not be running at 20 I would be paralleling his path okay, okay. thank you yeah yeah it's a very very interesting um, course and I'm hoping that this is the master's jumpers. Okay. Can you guys see the video now? Yes. Oh, wow. This is easier than, than I thought. Okay. We'll just watch it one. There's a lot of wind. Remember I said I didn't get the turn I wanted on uh, the opening on three. Right at 11. And then I stayed over there and kicked him out so I could run around that blue and T-bone him. Not my favorite thing to do. I didn't get too close to that. And again, just see how he had to, we'll watch it in slow motion. Went a little too deep in there, didn't need to do that. Nice job, Sandy. So we'll go back and I'll show you a couple of things. I don't know if you guys can see the subtleness in the lead changes, but I'll show you with the lead out what went wrong. So I was thinking about doing a really super nice turn after the weave poles. So that's why if you can see my cursor, this is, would be my, my normal favorite position. Some people let out over here and did a, did a lead out push. But um, so I'm a little closer to three than I want. So he could have, and I'm looking at my feet and uh, my feet, if you guys, ooh, I'm setting myself up here because everybody knows top. Top is um, where your feet should always point on a lead out, which is takeoff, which would be where my cursor is now. Paralleling the path, which is what my foot would do if I wanted the tunnel. 
um, or at an obstacle. And a lot of times when you're pointing at takeoff, you're also pointing at an obstacle, but not always. So if you remember top, you're on side foot, which is the leg closest to the dog. And, um, uh, and it does not look like I'm cleanly. So I, he, and my hips are a bit open there. He could have thought that I was going to um, send him to the tunnel. And, and see my, I have not weight started weight shifting back either. Whoa. Yep. <laughs> yes. So I've dropped my arm, but you can see you guys, he's already decided that it's probably the tunnel. Hope dies hard. So my position had it been closer to four, if I had had my, my um, body rotated more to take off, but, um, and it's late. So this is what I'm talking about. You can't stand there and say the lead out push works better than the lead out pivot. If the lead out pivot was done in a slightly different place, or if the foot was slightly different, or if the timing was slightly different, the lead out pivot might have been the most beautiful turn that anybody got that day. Same for the lead out push. If they're when they're done perfectly, they and again, I promise something coming up on that. But the the so if I had been if I had led out to But see, I didn't want to go. So you guys, I would have never let out to where I did and then traveled to four after. I would just be at four. But I wanted to be at 11. And I, I didn't need to peel off of that 180. I didn't have to be that many feet off of that 180. You get it. So I could have been, the moral of the story is I could have been in a more ideal lead out position which would have been closer to four and still been where I wanted to be. I'm just strolling there. So I told you I wanted to turn at 11 and that's what I did. And you can see my hand slap my leg and then I'm talking to him the whole time. And then I'm not going over to that 11. This is lanes and lines because I have to send when he comes out of the tunnel, I have to send to the yellow in order to have passage of this blue because if I come in here to get the tunnel and then wrap a, him around my body which I wanted to then I would have the line set for this off course tunnel so now yes. I'm going to hang and I sent him and I sent him strong when he exited that tunnel the minute I saw him I threw my whole giant body my leg my hand and told him to take, that's a big signal because that space was small. So that move right there got me this class because now he's, because the signal is so strong, you guys, and so well-timed, I don't have to hold it. It's over because it's big and strong and blatant. And now I'm just running and poor dog, and you can see I'm T-boning. I'm not paralleling his path. Total T-bone, total. He's coming in and he does a beautiful um, execution there. Did he get a lot of jump work on having pressure put on a bar? Yeah. So now this is the same thing. You're gonna see another great, so the line, my my on-site foot, which is my right foot, was my primary thing to get set. I had to have that line set before he exited. And I'm making strong contact. One strong step to make my pull happen. And that's a pull with lateral motion. And I had to do that in order to T-bone this other blue jump. You guys, one of the things that happened is the wind was so bad, they had to take all the wings off the jumps. God, we're going to take off. <laughs> so the next time you're wondering where your dog's information zone is, when he would like to know if he should jump now or, um, or um, stay on the ground longer for a tight turn, 
And that's why mm -hmm. I appreciate his uh, tight turn so much. Mm -hmm. So, and that's big hand up to get him to the information zone once he's at the information zone. Now that hand is working the triple information zone. And right now, I should have started my front cross and quit heading to the triple. It looks like I'm starting to decel, but see, I'm still moving to, into the path of the triple. That's unnecessary. I wasn't in front of it by any stretch, which a lot of people on these types of things, they run way over and pick the dog up and then run way back. And then when he's in information zone here, I'm gonna start my rotation before he lands. I, my goal is that the turn cue is over before he lands. And, and I think we had a couple dogs get lost into that tunnel. So I showed you two good ones. You guys, by the way, that jumping does not bother me. I mean, he's he's got nice, the one might have been a bit early, but um, I'm happy with the dogs jumping. Questions? Kristen, are you getting all excited about running those courses? <laughs> I'm a little intimidated now. It's like <laughs> I'll go. I'll have a novice one next week. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Yeah. That's, I mean, I guess the trick is, especially when I don't, you know, I'm a newbie and my dog's a newbie. It's like, should you just, I, I know you're big on, if, you know, teaching them even the hard stuff now, but it's like, if I don't know what I'm doing in my, you know, I guess I have a good trainer, but I'm just, <laughs> I'm just saying, you, you know, it's, it's tough. It, it's tough because if I'm like, I, I got some new jumps and I was doing some things and working on a pinwheel, which I realize we need work, more work on mm -hmm. um, training, just training, but it's not, it's her too, but it's also me, right? I mean, yeah. I, if I'm not doing it right, I can't expect her to do it either, so. Well, the thing of it is, is if you learn the timing, like BAM has, lots of, in the olden days, we didn't put emphasis on, like, that's what I've, I've told my students is when people talk when there's conversations about what is advanced work and what isn't advanced work it's really hard for me to to say because to me lines and lanes are really sort of just necessary work it you know it, it i i take i equate everything to driving and if you, when you learn how to drive a car if you had said to your driving instructor look you know i just i just need to know which is more the most important the brake the gas or the steering wheel I just want to, you know, I'll get one down at a time and I just want to know which of the three is the most important. Your driving instructor would not be able to answer you. If you want the car to do what you want, you have to have full command of the brake and the gas and the steering wheel. And, um, and the, if you learn a front cross and a rear cross the way you're going to, if you train with me, all of this stuff is, it, it, you know, it will, and bam. You know, just having the dog be able to understand all I'm doing is saying, you go there, I'm going here. And that's in BAM. It's, it's way simpler. The things I'm taking in, the things that I'm taking into consideration to use the cues is one thing. That's, that's the advanced part of it in my mind's eye. But you will, your dog will be able to do everything that Tux is doing there. It's just, it's just sending. It's just you go and do that. But you saw how blatant that cue was. I wasn't subtle, right? So, right. so the the part that the, the reason why I want to do novice courses is to say that the layouts are much easier at the lower levels. But every cue, I mean, in that course, t boning a line, that's the geometry. And having a send cue and a rear and a front, you, you've got that now. So, so it's the same. Yes. Right. It's the same yes. things. It gets more complicated or difficult as you go up the line. Challenging, There's I should just say. There's more to right. consider. Right. 
with lanes and lines. The timing and the turn cues will be second nature. Good. Anybody else got anything to say? Some of you ran that some of those courses. Yeah, anybody else run, run it? Have any comments? I'm curious. I think Margaret ran it. I think Julie ran it. Karen probably ran it. Jen might have run it. Sherry, did you run it? You weren't there. Sherry wasn't there. No, unfortunately, I live in Canada and we don't have any competitions right now. Smart. Because of COVID or it's just not warm enough for because of the COVID. COVID. Still. Probably wow. still. They're probably we are all smart. shut down. Yeah. Anybody else comments? Did you enjoy those those? You notice I didn't say I thought that was a great course. <laughs> a little harder than it needed to be. Could you post so with when you post the videos on the YouTube channel, can you also in the comments or um, post the um, the, the course? course? Yeah, the course map. Yeah. Wouldn't that be cool if somebody coached me? I guess I would it's hard, if you just look at the video, sometimes it's hard to you know figure out what the course map was. It's just techno. It's just me being kind of techno tech technically challenged technology. I'm technically challenged too. <laughs> I'm going to stop the recording now. If our, is our discussion, we can still chit chat. Julie, Margaret, Jen, Karen, anything to say about those courses? Well, you did a beautiful job on that jumpers run. It ate me alive. It was hard. It was hard. I don't yeah. handle as closely as you do, Sandy. I'm behind, I go from behind and I'm a rear class queen. <laughs> cool, cool. <laughs> Sorry. Always have been, old age. Yeah, I love rear crosses. I think they're grossly underestimated. Um, yeah. But I, her I angles were course, challenging. Yeah. I thought the courses were super fun to run. And I thought it was really, really clever how those little angles that the judge put in made it so difficult. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm telling you, I walked that thing <laughs> a lot. I was like, and then it's just like, oh, there's a lot that's got to happen. Um, yeah, I enjoyed all the I enjoyed all the courses. I thought the jumpers ran maybe harder than she thought it would. I don't know though. It look, does look like it on the course map. All right, guys. I think it was different with the wings off. It made a difference, especially if you walk it with the wings and then the wings weren't there. You're like, oh, uh, you get a little disoriented. You know, I, I, I agree. I agree. And I think it's different. I think it might have been easier to handle without the wings. I agree. Mm -hmm. It's like going back to the old days. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Or the days where they made the wings super crazy. Remember those days where they were like cats with evil eyes and flower pots? <laughs> and, and Fresno had these cats with these these two big wooden cats were the wings of the jump. And they had these these cats were like Halloween black cats with these big yellow eyes, and half the dogs would see that jump and shit their pants. <laughs> Yeah. I like the fact that she gave us room to maneuver, even though the angles would grab you at times. Yeah. There seemed to be more room in her courses. Yes, yes. A few of the courses I just loved, and there were none that I that I was uh, even this one. It was just like, ooh, this is okay. If if I like to do that in my head, it's like if I can do this, and if I can be there, and if that happens, and if and if and if like dominoes, then it will all work out. <laughs> Thank you.